Ah, aloha, great job today. We're gonna do a quick chord review, play with me. C major. When we play C major, we can also play both fingers right here on the A, I'm sorry, A string at the third fret, and then the E string at the third fret. And then we play our third finger on the fourth fret of the C string, and then the fifth fret of the G string. This should look like your A major, but we're gonna move that up and then bar. Yeah, cool. What we're gonna do next is take this chord from the C major and play a D minor. This D minor looks like the F major, but our finger is underneath here to get that D note. Next, we can either take this whole shape and then teeter-totter our fingers to get the second finger. You notice how the pinky's not on there, and now, moving them all over, the pinky is. We can scoot that up and then bar the whole second fret. And we'll talk about this bar situation. I'd like you to try this little exercise at the end of this video. It will help getting your fingers all situated to play the different types of feelings you will encounter with bar chords. After we have our D minor to the E minor, which also, as you know, can be played like this, or heck, even with our second fingering, or heck, even with the G major and just add the E, they all sound the same when playing. They're all E minor. The next we're gonna go to an F major. Our F major is gonna consist of our first finger, first fret here on the E string. Second finger is gonna play the second fret on the string closest to your nose, the A note. It has an open C and an open A, thusly giving us two A notes in unison. When we move the F major up here, we can't just play this with the open strings, so we're gonna need to teeter-totter our fingers, boom, and lay down a bar chord for the G. We also, since we're in the key of G and this has a high G, can play just this triangle, which leaves the G open, which is completely fine for playing a G major. When we play an A minor, we're using our first finger, second finger, third finger, or fourth finger to play the second fret. I like my second finger because it feels good. Due to spider exercises, it makes sense that it stays on the second fret. Wonderful. And then because our F note is generally our pivot note, or our C sharp is generally our pivot note, we put our first finger on the F and then put dual bookends, meaning one finger on the C string of the second fret and then another finger on the A string at the second fret, thusly giving you a backwards triangle looking function. Beep, boop, both of these together. It looks like a G major with these two notes, which is the B and the D. When we get rid of the G and we put it as an F sharp, we get a G major seven. And when we keep moving that G past the major seventh to the minor seventh, we get a F note for a B diminished or a G seven. Both the same name, they're both the same chord. All chords have two names. It's like a first and last name, lots of fun. So in review, C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, Ooh, I forgot it, there it is, uh, B diminished in the second fingering, we can have this one, it looks like a G7, or we could bar up the whole third fret play the G at the fourth, and then do bookends on the C string and the A string. Great chord. And then that resolves to the C major again. When we do this, we see the C as the root or the tonic, the one. Do. When we go to Re or the two, the minor second, we have a C major to a D minor. Our minor third chord, which is a triad, is based off of the E, G, and B notes, meaning when we have E, G, and B, we don't have an E, G sharp and B, which would be an E major. We have a flat three, which gives us a E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E. All those nonsensical names aside, we have five notes, get rid of our two and four, and we're left with our one, three, and five. An E major has a B note, a G sharp in it, and an E note. So when we flatten the G sharp, which is the middle note, to a G, we get that melancholy minor tone. That works for every chord. Every single major can be turned into a minor. That's how they work. By flattening the median. The median is the third scale degree. We also call it the major or minor third. So when we play a major chord, like a C major, 
and then we play a C major, if we know that this is the top note of C, and then when we play the chord, the G string and the A string, both the same note, meaning with four strings on the ook, we need three strings or three notes to make a triad. Meaning, if both of those are C, the other two notes have to be the third and the fifth because C is the one. So this note happens to be the major third. When we flatten it to make a minor third, we don't push our fingers over and move them like that. That would be silly. That would be like playing a G and then squishing our finger backwards to hit the B flat. You can, but it doesn't feel good. You also could play a G like this and then just move back the first finger, which by all means does work, but it's not proper fingering as far as where you're gonna be moving later for doing mel melodic movements. Also, all of these are all suggestions, okay? So once you get the basis of how to do these things, like a scale playing it vertically, and then playing it horizontally, and knowing that the chords of C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, and C major are all seven chords in a key that has no sharps and no flats. Meaning I didn't say C sharp, D flat, F, uh, anything else. It's all natural notes. So the concepts we learned today is in each key, there are three majors, three minors, and one special diminish. In the key of C major, you guessed it, it's the B diminished. I don't call that a G7 because because I don't repeat things twice twice when talk talking. So why why would I repeat things twice twice when talk talking about music music? C D E F G A G7 C. I wouldn't say G twice when talking. So when we do this, that G7 has to be called a B diminished. Why? It's the seventh. All seventh chords in a major are diminished. So when we do these, we have a major function, a minor function, a minor function, a major function, major function, minor function, diminished. One, three, five, one flat, three flat, uh, one, three, one flat, three, five, sorry. <laughs> one flat, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five, one flat three five, one flat three flat five, and that's how you make it diminished. So regardless of saying this, if you were to go above and beyond just the key of C major, the circle fist takes over. Five notes away from C is G. C, D, E, F, G. G is the f -f 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 first to have a sharp. That f -f 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 first sharp is an F. So we'd have G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor, F sharp diminished, and then we go back to G. If that's a little whoop, here's the idea. G is one, it's the major. A is two, it is not a major, it is a minor. B is three, it is not a major, it is a minor. And then C is the four, which is definitely a major. D is our four, which is most definitely a major as well. E is a minor as our minor sixth, and then our seventh is nothing more than our fifth as a dominant. Here's the case study, ready? If C major is built off of a chord that has three notes, and in C major, we're playing two C notes. Low, high, P, eight, it's a perfect eighth or an octave. C to C. That means there are three other notes. One is C, one is E, and one is G. So when playing a C major, we're playing a C major with another C. When we move our C down to a B, that gives us our major seventh. In this case, in key of C, there are no sharps and no flats in the key of C, so that would be a B note. I wouldn't call it a C flat, although I can, but we already have a C in the key of C. C, so we need to say B. A C major, with a B over the top of it is a triad with the B note, making a C major seven. When we move this B down to a B flat, we now get a flat seven or a minor seventh, which makes the C major, C major seven, C dominant seven, or to be more, you know, closely related to a music term, we just call it a C seven because dominant seven gets a little wordy. 
The way we know this is working is when we take the fifth of any chord and turn it into a dominant. So in the key of G, we had G, A, B, C, D major. When we play a D major, the notes are A, D, and F sharp. A, you start at D. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp. Cool. Get rid of six and seven, get rid of two and four, and we're left with D, F sharp, and A. That is A, D, and F sharp. Otherwise, D major. And also another high A open. When we move the D note down to a C sharp or a D flat, we get a backwards looking triangle. Guess what? This looks exactly like the B diminished or the G7 does. It's just horizontally right here. Same shape, different chord. When we play this, it is a D major seven. We can add that C sharp to double it or just leave the A. It's still in the chord. This is two chords at once. This is an F sharp minor and a D major seven. Just the same way that when we take a C major and go to a C major seven. We're also hearing two chords, okay? So the concept behind this is if you can play in one key, you should be able to play in another key. For this week, I would suggest playing a one, two, three, four progression in the key of G and in the key of C. In the key of C, it would be C major, D minor, E minor, and F major. Since we know the progression, it might become easier to see the C major, D major is being played as a C major with the pinky and then having three fingers just to go C major, boom, D minor, yeah? When we go to the E minor, rather than playing it like this, try playing it in the second fingering. Because now instead of having to go over and jump back to the F from the three position to the four position, minor third, major fourth, E minor, F major, in the progression of C major, D minor, E minor, F major, it makes more sense rather than doing a jump to just play with the second finger and lay down your fingers. Boom, see how your first finger is already over the first fret and ready for it, awesome. Since I said in the key of C, N, and G, try and play G, A, B, and C. The reason why we're doing this is we're working on meter. It's somewhat like our teeter-totters and spider exercises, except we're gonna be keeping the quarter notes super slow and anticipate the next note. If you need a reference on how this would feel, you could uh, put both of the last notes together and do I Shall Be Released by Bob Dylan, if that works, um, or the band, yeah. And then the next two chords share the beat. In the key of C, we'd have C, do, 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 D minor, E minor to F, back to G, uh, C. So we're gonna be doing a one, two, three, four chord progression. I hope that's interesting. Make sure you keep your meter going. And if you can't switch between the chords without fumbling, slow down just a tiny bit each time, okay? Lastly, I'm gonna leave you with a exercise which helps form bar chords. We're gonna call this one the bar chord maker. We're gonna be playing a C major or a B major or a B flat. It doesn't matter where you really do this as long as the concept is this. When we're playing a major chord utilizing the A shape anywhere on the fretboard, I'm just choosing at the third fret to make a C, C, C flat or B, B flat or A sharp, A, A, A sharp, B, B sharp or C. When we play this, I'm using a half bar, two strings. These are flat. The other two, they are pointy. When I take this finger and I make a full bar, it's called a full bar chord, same chord. I'm gonna remove my middle finger, which removes the major third and reveals the bar chord note right behind it, a minor second away as being a minor third. So we go from a B major with a half bar to a B major with a full bar to B minor with a full bar. You guessed it, we're gonna take that B minor, keep the minor there, and then move it to a partial bar with only three notes down and then that one high G covered at the fifth. That gives us a partial bar, and then we put down our major third to get a partial 
with a major. Between these shapes, you will find the one that feels the most comfortable for you. By going between the bar chords, partial bars chords, the minor chord, not only will you hear the difference between major and minor, but you'll start feeling the difference between the different ways to play these individual types. Again, half bar, two fingers flat on the third fret. Full bar, same A major shape, but we're playing a C major chord with a full bar. And then when we play our third finger, our middle finger off, and just get the note that naturally accrues by taking that finger off, depressing that, it's landing on the third fret for that minor third. We're then gonna move our fingering to get a partial bar. The whole time, make sure that you keep your finger right in the middle on the back here and not shoot it up the top or wrap it underneath or over, okay? And then when we go through the process of seeing these, it should become a little bit easier to feel our bar chords for each one of these. Here's about the, about the rhythm that I like seeing it at. like that feeling there i like that one there and i'm a big fan of the bar chord as well anywho i really enjoyed doing this with you this week remember when we play the seventh of any key it is going to be the one note which is going to lead us into the next key in the key of c it's a b diminished but it is formed by knowing that b diminished is also a g7 in the key of g the seventh is going to be that f sharp diminished but we know that the fifth turned into a dominant D major, D major seven. Now we get rid of that major note and we open it up for a C and we get a F sharp diminished. I hope you really enjoyed today's lesson. I really enjoyed seeing you and I will chat with you soon. Aloha.